839, Big 550, KTRS. Each and every Monday, we check in with uh, an expert from the Show Me a Suit policy researcher, Michael Highsmith. Welcome back, my friend. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You got it. Uh, unfunded state pensions. What's going on with unfunded state pensions? Uh, a bunch. So in the words of our treasurer, Eric Schmidt, it's actually Missouri's crisis on the horizon. So... This is an economic ticking time bomb that we're looking at. It's something that we may not be dealing with right now, but if we don't address it in 10, 15 years, we're going to be dealing with billions of dollars that we have to pay. All right. How bad is the situation? It's not looking too pretty, McGraw. So the Joint Committee on Public Employee Retirement collects aggregate data on every pension plan in Missouri, okay. and they, they estimate what unfunded liability is for all of these. And you, they, what they report right now, based on plans assumed rates, is $15.6 billion in unfunded liabilities. And to not get too lost in the weeds, what that essentially means is that's assets on hand that plans have versus how much they're going to have to pay in the future. So you're saying that the unfunded state pensions in Missouri is $15.5 billion short? I wish I could say that. So that it's really important how you value these kind of things. So the way these calculations work is you look at the total liabilities that you're going to have to pay in the future and you discount it based upon how much you think an, an estimated return is going to be on your investments. Okay. So say I have $100 and I think I'm going to get 6% on it every year. All right. I'm going to be paying out more than $100 in the future because I have a higher investment, right? Right. But if I'm making 8%, I have a lot more I can pay out. If I'm making 4%, I have a lot less I can pay out. Okay. So it really depends on what percentage you guess here. And with public pensions, they're a guarantee. So if you use something that's a guaranteed return rate, like a treasury bond at 2.5%, we're looking more like $80 billion. $80 billion. Yeah. So you're saying that the state of Missouri has promised to its state employees a pension in which that they, they have to pay out $80 billion going forward? So, yeah, so it's important. Uh, this isn't just Missouri's state plan. This is all the public plans in Missouri. So you look at Moser's, though, and that, that's Missouri's state employee retirements, and they're dealing with very similar issues. They're roughly two-thirds funded. So you, uh, explain the difference between a state-funded pension and, and a private pension? Yeah, so these, these are all public plans. It's just whether it's in the state of Missouri or if it's in a city in Missouri. These are all the aggregate totals. Oh, of the I see. Plans. Oh, I right. see. So, uh, of, of, but these of are public all public employees. plans. These are all public uh, employees. I see what you're saying. So a state, uh, a city worker is, is part of this pension yes, fund. Yes, absolutely. And a Jefferson City worker is part of this right. pension fund, all backed by the state of Missouri, mm -hmm. which is ultimately then all backed by the taxpayers <laughs> of the state of Missouri. Exactly. And the big issue with these kind of things is if we do fall short, so... Obviously, these are not guarantees that it will fall short. It's very possible investments. We make 100% every year, and we're doing fantastic, and everything's fully funded. But that's a risk that we have to take. And if you value it via the risk that we have, it's very possible taxpayers are on the hook for billions of dollars. When, when uh, you're saying this is looming, when, how, how far out in the future is it? It's, it's hard to say. It really depends on what investment rate we're getting. But if you look at Illinois right now, you go across uh, state borders, they're $130 billion in. So it's getting dramatically worse every year. So, so the sooner we address it, the better. So Illinois is already has a pension crisis. Illinois actually two years ago already tried to cut pension benefits because of how bad their situation was getting. They right. couldn't pay out. But it was declared unconstitutional to take away benefits from someone who's already accrued them. <laughs> right. so. so I'm no expert. But if the state has guaranteed X amount of dollars, there's really only two ways to solve this problem, and that is cut the benefits or re put enough money in so that the benefits exactly, are there. Exactly, exactly. One of two things happens. Either benefits have to be cut or... Money has to be in. Money, taxpayers either have to pay more or it's possible that other municipal services suffer because we have to reallocate to tighten our straps. We have to... Right. We have to deal with the budget. Who's looking at this? Is this on the radar? Uh, Jefferson City doesn't have a whole lot of leaders that we elect down yeah, there. So, so who's um, looking at this? Our treasurer, Eric Schmitz, he, as you see, he had an op-ed in the Kansas Star, um, Kansas City Star recently. So right. it's definitely on his radar. I would certainly hope a lot more people are. It looks like there's a lot of legislation looking towards taking care of this problem. Right. But again, legislation is either, I can't imagine there's too much legislation to raise taxes to put money into this pension fund. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's legislation to sort of hopefully uh, kick these people off yeah, the pensions so, or so a huge, delay benefits. A, thing, or, a huge thing with this is actually to just avoid the problem altogether. So you can switch from these kind of plans 
What these are, uh, it's called a defined benefit plan. It's a pension plan that is promising X amount of money every year for employees, which is really hard to keep that promise if you don't know how much investments are going to return to you. Right. So what a lot of legislation is looking towards is switching to something called a defined contribution plan, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. They just haven't heard that term. It's a 401k, you're paid up front, and whatever that investment accrues, however much you want to invest it, that's what you're left with. Right. But again... In the transition, what do you do with all those people who've worked for 20 or 30 exactly. years? Exactly. That's that's a whole other issue. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, wow. Uh, but again, do we have any idea? Is it five years? Is it 10 years? Is it 20 years? Do we have any idea when we get as bad as Illinois? Uh, I honestly can't give you an exact date right now. It's right. it's Obviously, this is very volatile. It really depends on how investment returns do. But as of now, state workers, city workers are still getting their pension the state is still telling these people, we will guarantee your pension going forward. Yes. Yeah. Do we know if uh, elected officials get a nice little pension out of all this? <laughs> I don't know the details. I don't know the de- that, 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 that would be interesting to uh, find out um, as well. Michael Highsmith, policy researcher at the Show Me Institute. I'm assuming there's more online? Yeah, there is. You can go to our website, showmeinstitute.org, to read more about this. Yeah. It's funny. I don't have a pension. So why are my tax dollars going to people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, are, why are my tax dollars going to somebody else's pension? It's very easy to make a promise, <laughs> but it's a lot harder to keep it. Yeah, especially uh, with my money. Right. All right. Thank you, uh, Michael. Six uh, eight forty six here. Big five fifty KTRS.